It is March 28th, 2024, Calvin Castine at the Clinton County Historical Association Museum. And we're here for a very special presentation by a very special presenter. What's your name, young man? Stephen G. Frederick. Stephen G., what's, no, what's the G for? Well, it could be a good be goodness, great. I mean, it's actually, it's Gilman. So oh, every Gilman. firstborn male in the Frederick line gets Gilman. So my grandfather was Gilman, my father's Gilman, I'm Gilman, my son is Gilman. <laughs> So you get the G assigned to you. So Paul didn't get the, the no, G. No, no, he's got the J. <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> All right. Uh, you go by uh, Steve or Steve Gilman? Is, yeah. or Gilman or no, what's your, Steve is, yeah, Steve is great. <laughs> All right. Uh, and uh, you are back at Clinton Community College? I and am. My little four-year sabbatical working at Paul Smith College. It was wonderful. I learned a lot of great things. Back to be on the hill. Glad to be back home on the hill, though, for a little while longer. For a little while, yeah. Yeah, well, that's another yeah. whole conversation. Yeah, that's a different, yeah. uh, different story there. So what are we doing here tonight, Steve? You know, I started a project five years ago before I left, and I, it, it occurred to me working inside the IIM. I got my IIM uh, Institute for uh, Advanced, Advanced Manufacturing. Manufacturing. As students come in and they see the latest and greatest in, um, in machines and technology and robots and 3D printing, I wanted to understand that we have been manufacturing items in Clinton County 30 years before the Civil War. This is not new to Clinton County. I mean, we manufactured rifles and cars and combs and shirts and typewriters and sewing machines. And, it goes, and we did a million hand-rolled Cuban cigars were made in Plattsburgh. <laughs> it's amazing when you start to do a little digging we have been doing this in Clinton County for a long, long time. I got to tell you, the initials IAM. I used to work at a place that, when I first went there, was known as Sheridan Iron Works. Uh, you're so going to see a little slide on <laughs> Sheridan Iron Works there for sure. Yeah, when they closed up in '87, yep. it was uh, Harris Graphics. Harris Graphics. But the union was IAM, International uh, Association of Machinists. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. See, so we by the whole. So I'm doing a display that's going to be in just as you go inside the IAM. It's going to be a map of Clinton County. And I wanted to try to represent where these manufacturing facilities used to be. So there's, I tried to get some from all around the map, all around the county, at least two from each town. And then in the city of Plattsburgh, there was a lot of them. So I'm going to do a separate map on the opposite wall with just where manufacturing, some of the major ones were in the city of Plattsburgh. So it's going to be quite educational, pretty fun. Okay, I hope that you've also included uh, Wyeth Harris. Well, how could we leave out Wyeth, <laughs> Calvin? For anybody, my, all my family worked at Wyeth for many years. So it's, what's interesting is when you see some of these photos of employees, you got to think somebody's grandmother's got to be in that picture oh, yeah. or grandfather. Guaranteed, somebody's grandfather, grandma's in that picture. So oh, it's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, I was uh, putting again together a Champlain 2000 book about 20 years ago, a little over 20 years ago now. And we got some photos from Wyeth, and uh, one of the photos was some of their earliest people. And my wife looks and says, there's my mother. <laughs> See, it happens all the time. Yeah, so yeah. And, and what we found out is the farther back you go, the fewer photos and information we have. You know, like the Redford Glassworks. I mean, yeah. we only have one photo. It's not very good, very limited wow. information. When we get to the Wyeth files, there's thousands of photos of Wyeth. And all the photos you're going to see tonight came from the Clinton County Historical Association. So they helped me with the research. They provided the images. I want them to have this display in the IAM. It's their display. It's their exhibit in the IAM. Okay. Now you've got to tell people what the IAM is. Uh, the Institute, you and I know. Institute for Advanced Manufacturing at Clinton Community College. It's state-of-the-art training facility. We cut the ribbon in 2017. You were there we, when there. we broke ground. Yeah. And you came back several times seeing yeah. the structure go up and talking about it. So yeah. it's fun to be back here talking about it again. So it's right there in the campus of Clinton Community College, and uh, it's something that we're hoping more youngsters will get involved with. We so, hope so learning yes. a, a trade, something they can yeah. take and Good into the hands workforce. Good work. The you know, it's, it's go. You need some kind of post training after high school. You're not quite ready. Let's get some training. Maybe you don't need a college degree, but you need some certificates. You need some kind of training so that you're able to enter the workforce and then you'll get the fine tuning at the employer which you end up with. And you've got employers that utilize that too, right? Absolutely, yes, yeah. So we're trying to, you know, what's gonna be up in the air with the campus, you probably heard Clinton Community College is relocating to the campus of Plattsburgh State. Yeah, I've heard. <laughs> I, I'm in favor of it. You know, once you get over the shock and you think about it, I, I see lots of advantages. Everybody's been asking what happens to the IM. Well, 
it's not going to close. It's not going anywhere. It's so new and modern, we're going to keep it open. It's going to be under some kind of different management. We're still trying to piece that together. It could be a partnership with the chamber and CV Tech and Workforce Development Board, a whole bunch of group of people. We're meeting actually next Wednesday, our first meeting, to decide how do we continue this, this uh, facility and this training. Yeah, that property is, as a county legislator, I know it's that property is owned by the county. Absolutely. County. You, uh, county the, property. the property and the structures and the yeah. buildings. So, yeah. so. Uh, And that was taxpayer dollars that yeah. built that. So yeah. it's going to stay and some open. donations. And oh, lots of donations. You know, yes. Some, some good names up there. Yeah, yeah there is. From families that contributed. And you know, Kelvin, I when news first broke, I called a lot of these families, uh, spoke to the, the, the alumni and the donors. To a person, every single one of them said, you know what's important is that you stay open. It doesn't matter where you're located. As long as you're still serving Clinton County, you're serving population of students who, you know, maybe they can't go away for four years. Uh, they want a two-year degree, not a four-year degree. They want small class sizes. They want open enrollment. We don't turn anybody down. So our mission is not going to change. And that's what's important is that we stay open and still serve our population. Yeah, and they can take the two years and put it toward a four-year degree absolutely the college, yeah college. the ones who do decide to stay on and continue they're going to be right there so this is a great we'll have a great conversation there's so many more questions right now that we have answers but as it starts to get more uh firmed up love to come back and talk about it yeah but this is all about the past right this now. is about the past but you know when you listen you hear our good friend gary douglas at the chamber talk about Munch, Plaza Rigas, montreal's u.s suburb this actually goes back to a long way. You're going to see it tonight. Our connection with our manufacturers in Montreal go back to the 1800s. It's not a new phenomenon. Um, so it's pretty cool. You're going to see that later on tonight. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah. Okay, well, I won't hold you up. I know you got to prepare. But awesome. Thank you, Kelvin. Right, thank you, Steve. Outstanding. All right. Steve Frederick. So, since you're all friends of Steve Frederick, I Well, we're related to half of the North Country. It's my brother from my Shazy. My aunt from my Shazy. No representation from my Shazy. Yes, so we've been working with Steve for what a couple of years, three, four years. Hell, and time flies. We're talking six years on this yeah, okay. project. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So. And so um, some of the pictures you'll see are from the CCFJ collection. They're all from your collection. Yeah. But uh, Steve's done the research. And um, have a seat, Mark. And I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Excellent. Helen, thank you. I'm shocked. I didn't think anybody would show up for so. <laughs> Penny's here. Oh, my God. They're always coming here. This is really awesome. So I'll give you a little backstory. Um, so I'm starting my 21st year at Clinton Community College. And I went away for four years, not to prison, I went to Kelsey's College. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. I said, when I went away, it sounds funny. Uh -huh. But I'm back. I'm back, and um, the whole Institute for Advanced Manufacturing was born over bacon and eggs at Gus's Red Hot. It's about 15 years ago with Paul Grasso. Remember Paul? So he said, I have an idea. I'd like to create an Institute for Advanced Manufacturing. I need money. So TDC said, we'll go in for half the feasibility study. Will Clinton Community College Foundation do the other half? So we each put in 15000 hired a group out of the University of Vermont. Long story short, cut the ribbon in 2017 on the Institute for Advanced Manufacturing at Clinton Community College. And as you walk in, you got all these beautiful modern technology. you got robots and 3D printers. And, and some of this the most amazing technology but I wanted the students to get a sense, and not just students really, everybody. We have been manufacturing items in Clinton County 30 years, 30 years before the Civil War, at least. And what I wanted to show is to give folks a sense of, hey, how did they dress back then? They weren't wearing hard hats, hearing protection, safety glasses, steel toed shoes. So I got my friends over here at the, the Clinton County Historical Association started digging through the glass plate negative collection. They have an extensive collection. So the, the oldest uh, manufacturer we can actually have a photo of is the Redford Glass Company. I hope you all know right behind you is the best collection of items from the Redford Glass Company. So 
the, the idea was, is I've got a space where you first walk in the doors with these blank walls. Why not put some photo displays of manufacturing going back as far as we can go so the visitors can get a sense, hey, we're about to walk into the latest and greatest and newest and modern advances. Let's not forget where we came from. So we're going to have a, a map, very similar, kind of like this. It'll be a map of Clinton County. And we got a 1950s map, so every town in Clinton County is a different co uh, color. So we want to try to represent every town. We want to try to find a manufacturing facility um, representing the town of Beekman Town and Allenburg. And it got hard, I'll explain, it got a lot harder to find up in Cherubusco. Um, very hard to find them. There were sawmills, yes. Uh, we all needed our sawmills. Grist mills. I was looking for more of, an of a more of a manufacturing. So that was the whole premise behind this project was to build this display inside the event <coughs> institute for excuse me, the institute for advanced manufacturing. Well, then I went away for four years, and boy, I hate not finishing projects that I start. So when I came back, I called my my good buddy uh, Jay for Avro and, and Helen and Dick Soper, and I said, "We got to finish this." So. I think by the 1st of July, it'll be done. Mm -hmm. So it's actually in production now. It'll be a permanent display. So let's get started. Again, I'm gonna, I, wanna, I need to credit every one of these photos are glass plate negatives here in the uh, Historical Association. Um, anybody want to guess what that photo is? Dick Silver, don't say anything. <laughs> anybody guess what facility that might be? What? Oh, great guess, great guess. You didn't know there'd be a quiz, right? That's actually Lozier. Yeah, that's Lozier Motor Company. And I believe, Dick, are we building marine engines right here? That's correct. There we are. See, my lasers are oh, look at that. So I think we're building, so this is where, inside that building, it's about to be torn down at Georgia Pacific. So the, the yellow building with the science that come all the way down? Right, Dick? Turn right, right, this is inside. Good. So anyways, uh, let's get rolling on this. There'll be a few more quizzes. I can't help myself. Redford Crown Glass Works. This is the oldest facility that we could find here in the uh, uh, museum. 1831 to 1851. So my goal was to try to find at least one photo of the exterior of a facility, one photo of the interior of the facility, and if I could, a photo of the workers. The older we went back, there's fewer and fewer and fewer photos. Okay. I was telling Calvin Cast time, when we got to Wyeth, there's thousands of photos. It's very hard to narrow that down. So this is I, this is also what you're gonna my presentation is in chronological order, not necessarily around the map. Uh, my Bill Laundry's here, my boss, my God, they're coming out of the woodwork on us. Interesting, um, this was how they were paid. That's their script. And, um, you know, I, I went to Beekman Town. I wasn't a really good speller. <laughs> but if you're spelling glass, I had to ask Helen. And her answer was, that's how you did spell it, because you didn't put two S's together, and they used an F. Is that correct, Helen? Mm -hmm. So that's not a misprint. That's how they spelled glass back here. Yeah. So that was worth 50 cents. But what I like about it, is you got an image of the guy hand blowing the glass, and you look right over his shoulder, and there it is. That's just so super cool. And an image of the facility. There's not much, because we're talking 1830, really going back before the, even the Civil War. Then we go down to Black Brook, Bill Laundry's neighborhood, we're getting down there. This is called the Black Brook Sulfite Mill. Now, sulfite, whoops. I'm getting at Sulfite was used to soften the wood pulp. So if you notice, they, they got huge mounds of pulp wood, and sulfite was used to soften it in the pulp business. Uh, I don't know exactly where this is, but you're going to see almost most of these photos have something in common. I'm going to ask you in a little bit if you know what's in common with these photographs. Now, this is my neck of the woods, my Z boys. All right, so this is the famous Shazy Landing. And this was a place called the Lewis Sawmill. And they're loading apple barrels 
that they just made at the sawmill. And you notice the horse with the old steel wheels, but there's a couple of model A's or T's in there. So that's the ferry heading over to Vermont, delivering mm -hmm. apple barrels mm -hmm. made. And I wasn't going to do sawmills, but it's Shazy. I can't help it. We got a little representation here. Uh, and Shazy Landing, New York. It's, it's just a fascinating photo. Anybody recognize that building? Oh, yeah. yeah. Keysville. Keysville. It's still there. Uh, what's fascinating is, is these guys, I'm going to get my, uh, oh yeah, I mean look at the stovetop hats, and, and I don't believe the, the eagle's still there. But that facility hasn't changed a bit since 1863. If you think about it, wow. You know, they made, all they did was make horse nails. Well, that equates to Warren Tire and G&G &G Tire today, right? They, we have tire companies. They have horse nail companies. Somebody has to have the nails for the horseshoes. And everybody relied on horses for transportation. Oh, and probably know that's also the home of the Adirondack Architectural Heritage Arch. That's their, that's their home office. Staying in Keysville for a little bit, the R. Prescott Furniture Factory. Now we're starting to get more pictures of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love the architecture, but I want to look at the people. These guys are not very old, no. right? So the workers, you know, they got, they got their uh, aprons, but you don't see a lot of personal protective gear. Of course, we're talking uh, 1864, but look when it closed. It's not that long ago. Um, and the, the Prescott Furniture Company was pretty famous for making desks and chairs. Um, this photo is, again, some of these pen and ink drawings are incredible. So this is the Bowen and Signer's Ironwork in Saranac, New York. So again, what do these all have in common? Drawn water. Why? Power. That's why I couldn't find anything in Cherubusco. <laughs> or the town of Shea, or really, or up to, there, there wasn't a big river like the Saranac River or the Osable River. And clearly the, the Little Shazy River wasn't powerful enough. But, you know, to the find, the find these actual drawings, so you, you got a waterfall right here, um, an ironworks, I mean, beautiful sketch. I don't know if that's the office or the mill house. Grist but, Mill on the other side of the river. What's that? The grist mill. On it the could be the grist mill on the other side of the river. Yeah. Um, so again, we don't have much on that. But as we get going a little no, more, you'll see we have more of these different buildings. Okay, who hasn't seen the Shattagay Iron and Ore Company? All right. What was that like? Yeah. So I got students walking in the IAM with their uh, Nikes on, you know, and the nice clothes. I'm like, hey guys, guys and gals, I'd like to go to work every day in those conditions. Let's not forget, that's what our relatives did. Uh, double stack, that was called the double stack. Uh, to bring, I keep getting on my thing here. Um, get lowered down into those mine shafts. I mean, every day but Sunday, I mean, winter, snow, summer, that's a really rough, rough working conditions. Um, that felt a little very old to me, either. So, again, it's the people that I'm showing that I really had the most fun with, is looking at the people and how they're dressed and their working conditions. Charcoal kilns on Shattagay Lake. This is actually the Narrows. I don't know what Shattagay Lake Narrows are. Charcoal kilns. Um, you know, they're, they're burning down wood to make charcoal. It's part of the manufacturing process. What fascinates me, this looks like a family just came out of church <laughs> on a raft built by Huck Finn. <laughs> what are they doing? Like, what, what are the boat? And this, these people are well dressed. I, I, what's going on? And I think that's Champy. <laughs> you don't know, but if that picture could tell a story, I would love to know more what's going on in that photo. Um, you can see where, again, we're. They were not really concerned about the environmental impacts. You're going to see that in some of these photos. They didn't care about the water and about the woods. This is my all-time favorite. I did a deep dive on Williams Manufacturing. This is right where the city of Plattsburgh Police Department is today. We drive by it. I drive by it all the time. 
And what, so this one company, I decided to do a deep dive on it. So they produced high-end typewriters and sewing machines. They're right across the hall. You want to see them? They have one of each here, right across the hall. 1872 to 1922. They're a Canadian company. So this whole concept of us trying to attract Canadian businesses is not new. We were doing this long before Gary Douglas came around. <laughs> and he talks about Plattsburgh being Montreal's U.S. suburb. This is not a new concept. This was actually written in that local citizens offered to build the building 300 by 40 free of rent and taxes for 20 years if they employ 100 men. That sounds like a pilot program that we do today. So where I got really excited about this is, this isn't new. What we do today is not new. We have a track record of doing it. So you see this water tower right here? I'm going to come back to that in a second. I'm going to show you. Just keep that water tower in mind. So right here is the Saranac River, right behind it, Plastic Police Department. Here is on the other side of the river. We're looking back. We're not looking uh, west. That's a pretty big facility. There's, there's the water tower again. There's a typewriter. And if you look right on here, it says, oops, Plattsburgh, New York. Right on the little... So they had to machine. Every, every part on this typewriter had to be machined and made right in that facility. So these were high-end Wellington typewriters, and they produced them until 1922. Again, go check it out. It's in the next room. They also produced sewing machines. Very cool. And you think about this. In 19, this is in 1908. Somebody staged this photograph for marketing. Right? That was taken with the tripod camera and the cloth and the thing you hold up and goes poof. I mean... That's, that's a pretty good marketing photo from uh, 1908. Again, they have an example right here at the museum. You want to see the sewing machine. Now, this was my other favorite. Now, we get the Saranac <coughs> Horse Nail Factory. And, you know, the artist who did the rendering on this, look, you even got a guy down here in the little canoe. And what a beautiful building. And it says Saranac Horse Nail. I thought it was in Saranac. Well, fortunately, Simon, uh, who works here, like, no, that's in Plattsburgh. Oh. Okay, well, where? Well, he did some digging. He found the map showing it's almost right across the river from the Williams Manufacturing. <coughs> a little bit downstream. So the Williams would be right about here, across the river. Again, more of a built, built a sluice, but it would have been right across the river from Williams. Fascinating. 1878 to 1889, so it would not have operated at the same time Williams had operated. <coughs> you know, what's also kind of sad to me is there's not a single stitch or remnant of any of these companies left. These are big employers. These employed our great-grandparents, and there's not even a road sign, not a marker, nothing. Especially like Williams. That's a PD. No, there's no marker. Sheridan Ironworks, okay, we're just swinging around here to Champlain. Uh, uh, um, we were just talking about that earlier. Um, Sheridan became, what happens after Sheridan? Harris. Harris, right. Um, classic, classic sketch drawing. I, I couldn't find any photos of the inside. I'm sure there are some that exist, but we couldn't find them closely for us to, get, to grab. Or, mem or photos of the um, employees. All right, Shazy boys, I'm going to quiz you. 19, 1883 to 1965. All three of you fellows were born, were alive. Where was this? I know. Right here? Right, right, right out here. Behind Bush Hall. That's it. That's it. Good quiz. Right where the quarry. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, they, so what they're talking about is this facility, I mean, it's huge. I mean, look at the, look at the old cars over here. I mean, that's got to be, you must have seen that from a long ways away. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What did they make? Well, they quarried Mine. these uh, three different kinds of hydrated mm -hmm. lime. Now, the lime was, farmers used them, obviously, on, the, on their fields. You had fine, medium, coarse right here. But you can see they were also used 
in the steel manufacturing process. They got rid of the impurities for the steels. So again, you're looking at a, well, this is a trade show. Somebody was showing off their products. So I'm glad you got, again, don't you think there ought to be a marker or something that says? No, there's nothing there. There's nothing. I, I remember the old yep. sideline that went across Cisco, was it? Yeah. Sideline came across there from the landfill. See, yeah, that's that's. I feel bad that that's actually a year before I was born, so I can't help you. <laughs> um, all right, how about A. Mason and Sons of Peru? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, right, right, Dick? You remember those guys? We cut logs for him. I love it. You cut logs for him. Now this was in Peru. I'm guessing by the river going through yeah, here yeah, yeah, yeah. in the bridge. Would this be to the left if you're driving over the bridge? If Down you're heading south. Yeah. Yes, heading yeah. south, left yeah. over the bridge. Would have been this huge facility. I mean, look at, look at the lumber they've got sawn back here. This is just the Peru facility. I think the brick building is still standing. Yeah. 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 I'm not from Peru. I'm a West Z boy. So I got a building behind that. It's still right here. This one is still. Yeah, they're renovating it. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. All, all the windows now have paintings from historic photographs. They're beautiful. And the colors Love correspond it. to the stone. The Is stone. there a sign that says A. Mason? Oh, oh yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, there's interpretive signs all along the river. Well, we got to do something in Shazy, fellas. we got to, <laughs> we got to, we got to, we got to get I think they had a few other ones through there and wiped them out. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Look at this photo. Their sign. Um, yeah, look at this, this old car over here. They're clearly sawing at the mill. Now, this one fascinates me. Plattsburgh Shirt Company. We don't yet know exactly where it is, but if you read the sign, I blew it up. Wanted. Girls to work in shirt factory. Apply at once. Look on every window. There's a woman staring out the window. All down through here, she's young. Couple guys, I would look. It doesn't look like it's right on water. So unless we find another map that has it labeled, um, 1883 to 1931, and here's the there's a sign up here too says 1883, Plattsburgh Shirt Company. Who would have thunk it? There's some more shirt companies you're going to see here in a second. But that that just really interests me how they staged that photo for this, and everybody sits still. International Paper Company, Saranac River. Yeah. Now look at that big pen. Whoop, where's that pen stock coming down through there? Um, one of my other favorite pictures is right here. Oh, wow. <laughs> I love that picture. All right, so there's the ladder. They decided to climb up here. Here's the boss, and there's the junior, senior, junior. There's got to be the bosses here. But again, do you see any um, steel toe shoes? Eye protection, hearing protection, hard hats. Women. Women. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, You're working at the shirt factory. <laughs> that is so true. This is very true. Fascinating story, though. I'd love to know more about this photo. Platco. How can, we cannot have a discussion here about manufacturing and not mention Platco. Unfortunately, we don't have anything here at the Historical Association. They have their own archives. So I really need to go see them and say, hey, can I have a photo of you pouring yeah. the actual forging of steel in your facility around the turn of the century? I know they've got them. Yeah. I just have to go see them, make sure I put that in the, uh, the display. 18, 1897, still operating. Who's some Moors? Oh, yeah. Not the slipper factory, no. close. I heard about that. Oh, no. This is the Moore Shirt Power Company. So what's the clue in this picture? Now my, my mother is a Menard, so all the Menards are Moors, they all grew up here. That's the clue. That's still there today. That's close. That's, that's close. I used to swim underneath that when I was a kid. So that's the iron bridge that's today's close. I drove down there the other day. This is all cedar trees, not an iota of that building or what it did. Now I heard about the slipper factory from my mom and there's some photos. Uh, I had some relatives that worked there, yeah, but this one just, relative. this but one just... You must have went swimming down to the dam right there. Oh yeah, the dam's yeah. right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I keep hitting my, uh, not hitting my, yeah, right there. Yeah. So, again, you drive by, nothing. So it made shirts and power, so that's kind of cool, again, being right on the river. 1899 to 1930. 
That, was that right next to the Methodist Church? Yes. Down there? The Methodist Church would be like right here. Yeah. yeah. There's the church, and right now this is all cedar trees, and then there's the bridge. Again, I think the uh, irony here is it's not an iota of that structure that employed people. It was really important in what it manufactured for that day. All right, Lozier Motor Works, a.k.a. the site of where Georgia Pacific is. Now, this little 10 acres of land has been repurposed more times, right, Dick? Right. From its founding. So in this particular shot, we're talking about Lozier. Uh, 1900 to 1914, we know the expert on Lozier, Dick Soper in the back, um, producing cars, producing marine engines. Um, if you go to the Adirondack Museum in Blue Mountain Lake, it's now called the Adirondack Experience, they have a, a, in, the boat, in the boat building, there's a beautiful example of a motor that says right on it, Lozier Boat Company, Plasford, New York, which you can see right up close. One of my favorite pictures. <laughs> So my daughter helped me put my slideshow together, and she said, Dad, this guy is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> he's got that cool stash. He's, got that, he's just got this cool look in his eye. All right, so there's the boss, as we can best figure. But, and this guy here, I don't know what he's doing. Uh, but again, how are they dressed? I mean, there's people way in the back. Again, they're building these marine uh, uh, engines here at Lozier. That's a pretty cool staged photo. I think if I showed up to work tomorrow with those boots on, <laughs> they'll kind of laugh at me, but that's what the boss wore back then. So yeah, she thinks that guy with the stash is really super cool. They had their own baseball team. Baseball was huge around the turn of the century. Hotel Champlain had a baseball team. You listen to Dr. Frost. He talks about all the local facilities Line Mountain had a baseball team. Oh, and this was baseball at the turn of the century was huge. Yeah. So right here it says Lozier. That's on the uh, chest. Look we'll at that old catcher's mitt and the, and, and the uh, catcher's face mask right there. I try to zoom in to see what the, what is that? That's the Lozier symbol. Is that the symbol for Lozier? Yeah, you see it over there? See, oh, see it. Oh, there it is. Yep, I see it. So cool. That's the Lozier baseball team. Elvis played baseball for Lozier. Yeah. Right? I'm looking at it, but it's just me, or I think that's Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> playing ball for Lozier. Okay, glass furnished and standish. Now again, you look at what I love about this photo. Look at this old steam shovel on track on railroad car. So they're loading iron ore, which is just around the corner from Lime Mountain, where mm -hmm. it's standish. Now what I want to show you about this, I got three photos of this. What struck me is it's big. So this is one side of the building. Here's the other side. You can tell by these towers right here. The rail cars, the lumber. This one struck me. Hmm. Look at the uh, look at the trees that was just butchered all the way far back as you can see in this picture. And there's some uh, uh, kilns right there that talk about slash and burn. I mean, again, it's, it's the industrial age. They were concerned about their pollution, their cutting of trees and what was left. But that was a big facility, and uh, it is striking um, what it may or may not be even left up there today. Another shirt company. This was cool. This is factory number five. So the United Shirt and Collar Company had facilities all around New York State. Plasterics was called number five. This is Bridge Street. So now you're standing on the bridge looking up towards Margaret Street. So this is where that parking lot is now. Remember they tore down that little gas station? That's right where this is. I, I was hoping to try to get a sharper image, but we're talking about an old glass plate negative um, taken from across the river. How many people recognize that building? Hmm. Do we know where it is? No, it's the it's the the yeah. Which where? Right across from the Blasberg City Police Department. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this this building hasn't changed a bit. Today it's apartment houses over right there. So check out check out the horse with the load of lumber with steel wheels. This arch is still there. This brick wall is still there. And behind here are all apartments. This is now paved. You go up there and you go to Platco, and I shortcut from there to go to storage to get my chocolate milk. I just took that road. 
But the fact that that building hasn't changed a bit. Remember when we were talking about Williams, I said pay attention to the uh, water tower? There it is. <laughs> so again, the proximity, here's Williams Manufacturing with that water tower. There's across the road, which was dirt. And there's the entrance to the lumber, lumber yard. And now these are all apartments. That's a lot of lumber. In fact, my father talked about going there to buy lumber. And also, it's, it's kind of cool to talk to folks who really remember, that's a lot of board feet of lumber in that in that building. Better lumber than lumber. Yeah. Look at that truck. Think that's overloaded? <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know what year that is, but I'd say he's got a heck of a load now. <laughs> so, they're, all, they're saying Mason Building Supplies, Plattsburgh, and Peru. So that's one of one of their delivery trucks. Um, not sure if this is in the Plattsburgh plan. Maybe it's the Peru site. Hard to tell by the background. But I just love the truck, and I love these guys standing out there. <laughs> Underwood Paper Company. Where do you think that is today? Roger, are you? I, I, got, I got a guy with a PhD in history here giving away all my answers. <laughs> yes, Underwood it? Avenue, where the site of Imperial Paper, Imperial Wall Covering. Yeah. Yeah. This is the site. I get what you're finding out. Like Lozier, they all kept using the same. They'd get bought out, and a new company would come in, build it, improve it, get bought out again, new company would come in. So this is the site where they're building, at the time, the dam. Um, and it was Underwood Avenue and the Underwood Paper Company, 1916 to 29, they're doing something here with the dam. I love this one. Now, whoops. So you can see where they drained the river and they're redoing, oh, I'll keep trying to hit my, sir, trying to hit my uh, laser. Well, they're putting in the dam now this guy, look at the mud. Yeah. Now I grew up on a dairy farm. I spent a lot of time walking the plank with a wheelbarrow. Right? 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 Getting knocked off when wind blows. Yeah, I've had that happen because I know exactly what that guy's going through. Of course, he's not pushing a wheelbarrow, but I know what it's like to be blown off a ramp like that. Um, fascinating. They're literally building the dam that's there today that they want to take down. The dam is there today. Quite a few years ago, I used to live on the Adirondack Lane. Mm -hmm. A bunch of guys are swimming there. Yeah. And they go up about me to you and they stand up. So it has to be the it's old gotta be the old yeah, the thing dam. Yeah. Right in now there. They were there on the other side of the spillway. Yeah. I used to swim there as well. Yeah. And you would have the red and the green and the blue ink book. I mean they were <laughs> like, holy cow and turning <laughs> colors. <laughs> yeah, so, where the trail park was these yeah. signs of Rainbow River. <laughs> that was Rainbow River. I saw it firsthand, but um, but look how they use these, you know, these derricks to, to pour concrete in there. Ah, love this. I'm going to quiz you again. Here's a clue. Look at the size of the dam in that lake that's behind there. Okay. 1919 to 1926. It was located at Friedenberg Roger. I'll give away the answer. Where was Friedenberg Falls, New York? No, right there in Plattsburgh. Just up the road. Exactly. Roger just said it. When you go over the north way, you're on 87, head south, you know where the pen stock comes in now? Well, there's a, pen, there's a new pen stock. You actually can see some of the metal standing. You go on the Treadwell's Mills Connector Trail. That's it. They know you're going to be able to see this. But, the, but why was it called Friedenberg Falls, New York? Because it was Friedenberg Falls. I think that's kind of interesting. Quiz myself. So, who remembers Powell Blade? Right, right. My mother worked there. Right. Um, my mother and father still worked there. My father said there was an ice cream shop, like right. You guys remember that? He goes, I used to go get ice cream right next to. Yeah, there was Bell a little Blade. hot dog stand on the other side. Yeah, that's what he was talking about. Johnny's or something like that? I Albert, I wasn't around, man. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Pell Blade, Roger, what did they make? Razor blades. Before blade. razor blades, what did they make? Uh, knives. What uh, kind of knives? Uh, pocket knives. Yep, and before that, what did they make? <laughs> Before that, what did they make? Uh, Swords. Close. Oh, oh. Bayonets. Bayonets. Oh. For World War One. So you attach bayonets. So when they got out of the bayonet business, they got they're still in the blade business. 
and they were doing razor blades. Mm -hmm. This was owned by a Canadian family called the Mailman Brothers from Montreal. Mm -hmm. the Mailman Brothers ring a bell? They also owned, at the same time, the Hotel Champlain. Mm -hmm. Right there. They owned the hotel. When it ceased being a hotel, they were the last operators of the Hotel Champlain mm -hmm. before it became Bellarmine Jesuit Seminary. So they owned, they owned the hotel and they owned Pell Blade. So now, we're getting a little more newer. There's tons of photos of Pell Blade. I got some of my fun ones for you. Well, now look at this picture. What are we looking at? Well, those little tiny boxes of razor blades, right? Now here's, here's the women. The women are boxing the boxes in the bigger boxes. Um, you know, interesting what they're wearing, you know, what, how they're dressed, what they're doing. So there's the women. Here's the men. How are they dressed? White, white jackets, black pants, they look like doctors. Yeah. <laughs> but this is very clean. Look at the dimensions up on the wall. Mm -hmm. Those blades, these are the blades, they're testing the blades. There's blades coming off the machines. They're numbered, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. Overhead pulleys, still in operation. Mm. Let's look closer. Let's go back to the women. Well, I think she's operating machine, but I think this is packaging, the small packages. Because again, they're putting them into bigger packages. But again, we're coming around. I tried to zoom in on that calendar to see what year it was, but I couldn't make out the year on that calendar. Day by the day, the day, week. Yeah. Kind of bright. It's not exactly dark or not really dirty. You know, got some light in there. Did you? I don't know what the, thermo the temperature might be like in the summertime. I love this picture. Somebody in this room has got to have. A relative in this. What are the odds? Wait a minute. Right, good Go check it out. You got relatives in there, Dick? <laughs> I see one in the other. first picture that it was her over on the right hand side. Yeah. yeah. So but I don't see her. How are they dressed? They kind of like a white. They are right. all yeah. had beautiful then, nurses. Look at the nurse. You can see the posters. Is oh boy, what a blade. They <laughs> <laughs> must have had to all wear the same uniform when yeah. it looks. Yeah, I would love to know what they're thinking. I mean, I just I can just stare at this picture, look at them, and think, what are they thinking, and how how much money did they make? I have no idea. What were they working? We got a sense of the working conditions, but I got a feeling they weren't paid as much as the men. Right? One more shot. The interior again. You got here's the actual. Whoops. Here's the actual manufacturing line. These are the blades coming around the corner. They're doing some sampling here, some some testing. Again, you got the guys, they're wearing a tie, white coat, tie, look like a doctor, uh, overhead, overhead equipment. I love equipment, guys. I just found this little truck, I had to show it. Anybody heard of Borst, Burst Forrester Dixfield? You guys remember that? So 36 to 44. All right. What, what are they, they're getting ready for a parade for Plattsburgh paper mill. What do you got? You got paper plates. Paper towels. Would that be the old diamond or something? Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. So before it was diamond, again, you got to work backwards. That 10 acre apart, maybe 20 acres, right around GP Packaging Corp, kept being developed and bought out and developed again. So you're right, this is right around there. Um, again, getting ready, getting ready for parade. The other giveaway, no H. Remember, Pittsburgh in the old days didn't have an H. So they dropped the H there. But these guys are, you know, the guys in the back looking serious, and they've got women in the front displaying their products. It's kind of cool. There you go, diamond match. Right? <laughs> no, that rings a bell for some folks here. Um, you know, I didn't realize it did wax paper. Mm -hmm. I remember the, the diamond match, I just heard about it. Of course, I wasn't there around the time. But. Mm -hmm. So again, we're talking about a facility that keeps morphing, it keeps being bought out and improved. This was a employee's picnic at Point of Rush State Park for Diamond Match. Again, i got to believe there's somebody's relative in this picture that's not that old. Okay? I'm just going to say that. There are, where's, there's none. No women folk. But if I go to a picnic, I'm not wearing a tie. These guys are wearing ties. I'm not wearing a tie to go to a picnic. 
Right. You can't not not mention Wyeth, Arist for many of us. Um, my mom worked there for 35 years. When I showed her this picture, she was like, oh my God, that's my window. <laughs> <laughs> she worked for the plant manager for 35 years, so she was so happy to see her window. Yeah. Jerry, Jerry, how many years Jerry at Wyeth? 37. 37. She and my mom worked together. Um, you worked. Yeah, I worked you were Chris, how many years were you there? Just five. Five years? Mm -hmm. um, it's a, now, you want to talk about thousands of photos they have in the archives here. It's incredible of that. We had a very hard time to narrow it down. We tried to find some early pictures. Uh, look how they're dressed. Nurses. They look like a nurse. Yeah. Right? The, yeah. white, the white cap and, and um, you know, the, the product line, I'm guessing, I'm guessing that's primary. Yeah. Right? It's got to be Premant. That was their bread and butter product that they made. Um, you know, trying to get the, you know, looking at the um, how these guys are dressed. Uh, face mask, almost like a surgeon's head thing. No rubber gloves. Uh, yes, rubber gloves. Um, again, some of the stainless steel equipment. This again, this goes way back. It, I had a very, very hard time narrowing down out of about a thousand photos, three or four we could just put up here on, on, on display for discussion. There we go. Now look, here's the, there's the school. It's still there. There's the old original building. Of course, now none of it's there. Actually, we've got a couple of the warehouses that might still be there, but Ken Pilot wasn't there. What else is missing, Jay? All the warehouse down here, Ken Pilot, the warehouse is back there. So, very, look at the parking lot. That was it. Uh, a little baseball field, so Quonset Hunt, I <laughs> had a Quonset Hunt back then, so I didn't get, I have no idea what year this is, but can't really zoom in on the cars. Like a baseball. Yeah, right there's a race stand, there's a baseball diamond right there. That's actually probably the parking lot. Could be, that could be the school parking lot, it that is. could be the employer. It is. Yeah, in fact the administration building wasn't even there yet, because that's where this, that was. So when, did, when did they take the old school down, Calvin? Calvin, do you remember? Well, they, before I started. They started. built around it, but I'm not sure if it's... That's it right there. Yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. think you'll yeah. find some of those walls were still there at the end. They, they kind of built around it. Because you could see it right into the 60s and 70s. It, you would still see the the difference there, that uh, what the original school looked like. And what's there today? Is there even a <laughs> sign that says why? Is there, is there a sign, like a history sign, that says... I mean, how many people were employed from Wyatt in the Arabs over the years? My family was. I mean, but what's left now? Nothing. So I think it's we got to try to do something with our history. Um, yeah, that's my last photo. Got to thank my colleagues over here, Jerry and Simon and Helen and Dick Soper and my daughter Megan, who uh, made me that PowerPoint here. So, uh, any questions? This has been great. Thank you for being here. This literally is the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. of the manufacturing. Helen keeps sending me articles of this Plattsburgh Comb Company oh, where yeah. they used hooves off of cows yeah. and horns to steam and shit. You know, no, 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 that must have smelled. That don't smell good when you burn horns. Well, that was right? a paper just a while yeah. back. But yeah. Yes, that was Helen yeah. putting that in the paper. Oh, yeah. oh. And the fact that there was train loads of tobacco coming from Cuba to Florida, rail car to Plattsburgh, Hand rolled a million Cuban cigars a year here in Plattsburgh. Mm -hmm. When that burned, I guess you could smell cigars from all over the country. Good stuff, too. So it is amazing. The Adirondack Rifle Company, again, you go back to the Adirondack mm -hmm. Museum in Blue Mountain Lake, it's a beautiful, looks like a shallow sharps rifle. But it says Adirondack Rifle Company, Plattsburgh, New York. Mm -hmm. We have manufactured so many cool things, and Helen's always digging up, sending me things. Hey, do you know they. No. This is a rabbit hole. Once you start down it, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. I have a question. Um, I think there was an article somewhere about um, cigars. You mentioned cigars. Yeah. That was Shire. Is that right? Helen, I'm gonna. I didn't hear the question. What was the name of the cigar company? Was it, was it Shire? Shire? That's one of them. Yeah. Metal I just wondered if it's the same people who had a liquor store. Yes, a yes, store. they went on. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Alex, you have a cigar from there? <laughs> <laughs> the Shires were my neighbors. Yeah. Look, look, at, look at the knowledge that's in this room. A lot of you know a little bit about some of these manufacturing. I'm predicting 20 years from now, that knowledge is going to continue to dwindle, and nobody's going to remember any of these 
manufacturing companies that employ. You've got to start working on the signs. Uh, I've got to, maybe I've got to work on a book. This to me has got to make use of a book or something. It just seems a shame that our economy relied on these businesses like we do today. But when they go, they go. Yeah. There's not mm -hmm. even so much as a thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, that gave us jobs uh, for, for our families and relatives over the years. So. Yeah, if I remember right, Tom Blake moved to Virginia. I don't know that, I Albert. So. Okay. I think so. Yeah, I don't know. You could do it. I mean, a lot of the stuff, Google it. It's amazing. You can deep dive on Pal Blade, the Mailman Brothers. Um, again, I, I could, like, Manu, like Williams Manufacturing, I did do a bit of a deep dive on that. And it's just fascinating. There's thank, Thanks to the Internet, you can find information on many, many, many of these companies. And if you saw a photo that you liked, Jerry will tell you we have them here at the museum for sale. So you may, you may order your photos of your favorite manufacturing facility right here from our friends at the Cook County Historical Association. Wasn't there something, Steve, on White Street, is it, where they did some mainstream work or foundry work right next to, not too far away from the, where Place Asia is now, up on the side street there? I don't know. Some kind of an iron place there, something that, yeah, foundry or something or other. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Dennis Holbert was talking about a foundry in Beekmantown that made moldboard plows in Spring Harrow. So remember that? It's right where, uh, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of it. Right on the corner, there's a marker. There's a little, a little board. Remember they had the dog seizure? You know, when they seized the house, all the dogs. Right yeah. there, but there's a sign that they made. You know what I'm talking about, Roger? They, they made, they made, they made. Uh, Dennis was saying that they made moldboard plows. It was metal. Uh, spring harrows, right at that little site, right there in Beacon Town. Down in that, down in that gully. Yes. Andy Shields used to talk about it. That's it. That's a little that's brook it. right there. That's right. the one. That's, that's what. That's what powered. There's a little teeny house there now, isn't there? A little white yeah. house near there. Helen, Helen, something. It's a woman's name. Hi, Haynes. Haynes Road or something. Like yeah, that. that's Haynes yeah. Road. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, again, it, it just, maybe I'm beating a dead horse. I just think it's sad that there's yeah, nothing left. Brody says he's a ribbon factory. Uh, Brody's, really? Yeah. I mean, I stuff that we use today that we, had, that we had made right here in Plattsburgh. So, and the ties to Montreal fascinates me. Mm -hmm. This is not new. Our dependence on Montreal-owned companies, headquartered in Montreal, but the manufacturing is done here. It's not a new phenomenon. So. Any other questions? This has been great. You guys get some great feedback. Well, I, I know right there on Cemetery Street, I think there was a, a clapboard factory and a brick factory right uh -huh. down there. And further down, when I was in that, there was a barrel factory. Yes, I knew that. Yeah. Yeah. I heard that. Yeah. Well, that so much stuff. Yeah, that barrel, barrel factory. Yeah, the yeah. barrel factory. Cider Mill Road. Yeah, Cider Mill Road. That's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. 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 Uh, North Farm Road, uh, I'm trying to think of the Corbo Creek. Yes. That was all manufacturing along that area. Was there? Uh, I mean, was and that then in Champlain, they made uh, canal boats, uh, yeah. skis. Yeah, you go into uh, Celine Paquette's museum, she's yeah. got some canal yeah. boats in there, great photos. Skis. And, and the um, skis, too. And the ski, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just fascinating to me. That we've, been, we've been manufacturing here, and it all ties to power from water. And that, that those times at the turn of the century. It seems like companies don't want to reuse buildings anymore. Yeah, yeah. Well, they got to tear them down. Some of those are beautiful. Yeah. That Plattsburgh horse, yeah. the Saranac horse nail factory was beautiful. But it's not necessarily having the latest and greatest on that. Sure. So, yeah. I was struck by how short a time most of those were in operation. Yeah. Think of the people who had to go find a new job. Yes. We think today, well, you're going to have 30 years of a career, but. Yeah, I mean, it's still happening today. Yeah, How long has Nova Bus been here? Every 10 years. <laughs> 10 years, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, come in with a big fanfare and hire a bunch of people. Ten. Yeah. Pratt Whitney. Yeah. Tax breaks. Tax breaks. Tax breaks. Right. Unemployment either. No, you were out pounding the pavement. Yeah, you were out. And whatever, yeah. retirement? I mean, yeah. who knows? Yeah, yeah. yeah. great point. Helen, anything else you want to add? No, I don't. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, everybody, for coming. I'm glad it wasn't a snowstorm or anything. Thank you. Go check out the typewriter. Right, Helen, is that right the next year, Morgan? And the sewing machine? And at the hall. Go check it out. It's pretty cool. Right behind you. Look at the red. And anybody who wants to buy.
photos. Photos, books. See this lady right here. Go to the souvenir she, shop. She can yes. fix you right up. This doesn't like even this touch thing. on what, how many we have. Sure. So. Yeah.